Hi. Good night. Hello. Everyone. Hi, so as we wait for more people to join the live as advertised on the page, we are supposed to start at 8. Um, so we are here to discuss kingdom economics, how to make money work for you in the kingdom. And we have Raja and Anne, who are my parents, and they are joining the live tonight to discuss this topic of kingdom economics so we'll just wait for a few more people to log on before we get into the to the discussion um but what we do want to touch on is that um our brand peppy ramnat international has been up and running for a good few months so what we encourage you all to do is to like the page follow us on instagram interact with the posts um as well subscribe to the website because we do have free content available like every month for you um we do share like tidbits almost every day so like share comment and we okay so we have people on so we will go ahead and start. So I'll pass you over to Roger, and he will begin our discussion tonight. Hi, pleasant night to one and all. It's a great opportunity to um, be on this live program and just to share with you briefly in terms of our personal experiences in reaching where we are because the journey has just started for us in terms of um there's been a lot of ups and downs and you know we have had our fair share of challenges and continue to do so um i wanted to stress on no go ahead yeah i wanted to stress a little bit on a little research I was doing this week, and it was a revelation that came to me in terms of um, tapping into the Academy of Heaven. I don't know how many of you will relate to that, but my, um, you know, in, we, we are from Trinidad, as you know, and my educational background is really like up to secondary school. You know, so that is where I cut off at like around age 16 or so. But a lot of, well, all of my success in terms of um, getting into, getting into real estate, um, into retail businesses and so on, because we, um, we do several, you know, different types of businesses, but our, my main core of business is really investment real estate. And everything really came from seeking the advice, the counsel of the Holy Spirit. This is something that was awakening me like around probably just over a year in really pressing in. It's something that, um, you know, I was doing but then it got really intense like about a year ago when you know i was like a crumbling on my end with business and you know they have um they came in a crisis in the world economy so the rippling effect that take place to in our land here being of third world status so to speak so i started pressing in because you know sometimes it gives you a Opportunity to seek God more in whatever you do. And um, I got a revelation on this, this kingdom, this kingdom um, academy where the Holy Spirit is the main lecturer, you know, and um, a lot of revelations take place and we have seen business, you know, turn around. 
in terms of um, things have, you know, financially become, you know, more stable and, you know, and um, we are so grateful for that, you know, because you, 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 whatever you learn, you know, whatever you, you seek, then the information comes and, you know, you, you get to, um, you get to practice it, so to speak. But Anna is here, and I'll turn you over to Anna a little bit, because, you know, we all, three of us, we work as a team, and, you know, we have so much that we want to continue sharing with you all. And, you know, so, um, here is Anne. Hi, good night. My name is Anne Mirage, and I'm so glad to be here on this live tonight, speaking about a kingdom. And... Uh, the financial kingdom principles of God as well. Um, as Roger was saying, last year had been a really hard year, but uh, we was trusting on God all the while. So once you trust on God, you know that there is always something in there for you. Um, once you give into the kingdom, yes. yeah. <clears throat> Once you give into the kingdom, there is no turning back. It's only your future. All you see is your future, and everything in your future is good. So, um, coming up to the end of this year, we have seen where God has moved in our lives financially and even spiritually. So, Tonight, as we are on the live, I want to say thanks um, to PRI for letting us be here live about the kingdom of God. Okay, so just some of the things that we want to talk about tonight. Let me just pull it up real quick. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you take over. He'll take over. <laughs> <laughs> because he has some burning desires of his heart to let the people know. <laughs> well, rather than truly, I'm these are what posts that we were doing yeah. during the week. During the week, we were doing some posts. Um, and we were talking about when you sow into your into the kingdom of God, you know, um, you gotta be specific of your needs. So again, what happened is that you know, people may um, it's a it's a sort of principle where we tend we don't want to be confusing God with the requests that we need. So, for instance, um, fasting is one of the key things that in my life and in my family life by extension. So, we practice that, you know, um, where we draw closer to God. So, um, and we are specific with our needs. So, <laughs> like, I started practicing, like, our sowing, our um, sowing seeds and so on, and being specific to our requests through the Holy Spirit, you know, which I think is a major, major breakthrough in the life of a believer because it gives you clarity with your communication with God, you know, so you're not just on and on about, oh Lord, you know. Bless me, are looking for finances and whatever and whatever. So you you wanna be, you know, you wanna be clear, you wanna, you wanna um you know operate in the proper principles when you sue. You know? So um there are so much more that you know god adds to when you be pacific because you know he ultimately knows your need eh? 
he ultimately he knows the need within your heart but um, the whole purpose of being specific is so that you yourself are not really double-minded in terms of what you are doing because the re reality of it even in in the physical in the business realm if we are doing a development or we are doing a road we are doing seeking you know um certain approvals to really deal with bringing a greater value to the assets that we are about to dispose of and bringing it to the place where financial institutions will you know take up the mantle of financing this for for prospective purchasers we got to do it in with the specific and in with the right channels and be you know and be um very precise in everything that we do and i personally think that even our interaction with god concerning these things you know you know bringing you to different levels and bringing you to that place you know um in terms of where you want to be and where he sees you you know is very very important to be specific so that is really one point you know that um i want to um that i'm sharing with you guys in terms of what works for us you know because um so it's a, it's a sort of a testimony so to speak so you know i dare you to really and challenge you to really seek that revolution in your own way in terms of whatever business you may be doing and in terms of whatever area that you want God to mold you, to strengthen you, and to guide you. So you can deal with it. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to touch on is, hi, good night, everybody. I'm seeing so many comments. Hi. So we'll get to the questions a little bit later. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to touch on is inspiration for your business. So maybe you all could speak on that. Like, how do you gather inspiration for business? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that talking to you? <laughs> Okay, people. Well, this is the first time I'm doing this live sort of thing. I see, you know, I not on no Facebook thing, and I'm kind of so I um this is a kind of trial session for I, you know. <laughs> All right. So the inspiration that what would motivate me, and and this is really being, you know, realistic in terms of this. You see this young lady here. If she says to me, Dad, I need a new vehicle, would you believe that inspires me as a father to pursue, <coughs> to get that finances and I'll take it before God to really direct me in terms of that? But that's a serious, serious thing. Eh? The inspiration as a father, as a mentor, as a leader in the home, I think your family is one of the most you know, influential, you know, inspiration that a father could get. Because when your family is happy, you are happy. And one of the, the statements I continuously make from time to time, and I try my utmost best to practice it, is that I want to treat my family the way I want God to treat me. You know, and um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a thing, you know, the motivation of, wanting to live a successful life where God is saying, you know, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things and everything shall be added unto you and all of that. And um, as we on that note, you know, one of the things that, ins that really inspired me to is, you know, having, my, having money in the bank, being able to meet the bills. And if you're not doing that, you know, I was looking at the Bible even a little while ago and, you know, when people are in lack or oh, you know, they don't really call people poor. They call them weak. You know, because if you can't pay a light bill, if you can't pay, go to the grocery to get 
food and the, and the way you want to. If you can't provide for your family, it's, it, it demotes you as a leader, as a father, as a provider of the home, you know. So one of the things that leads to success too is regardless of whatever situation you are in, even with the family circle or whatever it is that you keep honoring the family, you keep honoring the wife, the, the, the children, and by extension, those people around you because it is important that you maintain the right attitude so that God now is just unable to pour a blessing upon you. There's a lot of principles involved and, you know, we'll take it, you know, you know, one at a time and we'll just move with it, Anya. Um, but I think for me, uh, with my businesses, well, I have existing businesses. So what I try to do um, with myself and with my staff is that we try to create products and solutions targeted to helping persons, um, even the policies that we have at, at our establishments. It is geared towards finding a solution to a problem. So for instance, if you have an idea, your idea must be solving a problem and your solution is what you could take to market. So I believe the question that we were trying to address is how do you gather inspiration? Um, a lot of business and a lot of what we do is really targeted towards people. Um, if you are not making people's lives better, well then you're really not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And not just your customers, but as well, as well the persons that you have employed under your establishment. For us and for me, that is a big, big deal. Um, because we are taught in school, in the classroom, by society that the customer is always right. And I always tell my staff that is not true. Um, and the business encourages, the business will encourages that... Um, your customer is the most important person in your business. And I disagree because my staff is the most important group that exists within my business. If my staff is not taken care of, if they are unhappy, if they feel unfulfilled, they cannot successfully care for my customers. So my staff, they actually, a lot of inspiration comes from them um, when we take new products to market, it is a team effort. I could never say this was all me. And that is important to make sure that your people are taken care of. So I just want to go to a question. This? Okay, so Kevron is asking, how do you stay in the kingdom economy? So, um, if I may, what I do is we obviously tied into the kingdom. Um, that is one way to definitely stay into the kingdom to be to keep yourself a live participant. Um, we all, I also give offerings. So I tied way above my 10%. Um, because I do believe that I am giving to the king. And, you know, in the kingdom, we believe that we have access here on earth. We are not here to own. We are here to have access. So, therefore, um, one of the ways to stay in the kingdom economy is by tithing, by given your offerings and obviously by doing your first fruit. Um, that is just one way. I don't know if you have anything to answer. No, 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 that's fine. Um, obviously, um, obviously staying is like staying under the covering and the banner of God. So you have Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you know, you've got to stay under the covering and the banner. And once you take care of God business, he really takes care of you as well. So he's obligated and he's just to do whatever he promises because as Anya was saying, everything belongs to him. And all he say is give me back 10%. And it's because he's developing that managerial sort of authority in us and he's molding us to really manage because sometimes you find yourself living from 
let's say paycheck to paycheck, you know, um, you know, month to month, and you say, boy, 10% is so much. But remember, in the beginning, uh, to begin with, it is, it's not really yours, even <laughs> though, because God has provided everything on the earth for us, you know. So, you know, this is why your feet has, you have to stretch your feet. You know, you have to stretch your feet. And um, trust me, I am telling you this from experience. The first or the second time might be the hardest, but then after that, or maybe after the first, you just see God works because God knows what you can bear. God knows how things can work for you. And he knows he doesn't want you to make a, you know, to end up in a disastrous situation. So even though you stretch yourself and be, and you honor what you're supposed to do and you glorify him, it's an excellent way of staying, you know, under that covering of the kingdom of the economics, you know. Yeah. Um, another thing as well, I remember the first time that I ever spoke under the leadership of Dr. Pepe, um, a question was posed to me. It was a panel discussion and a question was posed to me and the question was, um, if somebody has a business idea, they have literally no means to launch this idea, no money, um, they're just in a cycle of poverty. Um, you know, how do they get around to actually launch in that? And um, what I wanted to touch on is that if you are interested in business or launching out or entering a market or whatever is your thoughts, um, you are never ever going to be without anything. So I encourage you to use whatever little you have and just watch God multiply and watch God open doors and watch God make things happen supernaturally because we are called to live and love in supernatural. Um, and I always say that the supernatural is our natural as kingdom citizens as well. Um, while he was speaking, I was reminded of a video that Pastor Miles did on management. And he actually spoke about poverty. Um, and poverty is being is is having a mindset, um, is having these thoughts that are keeping you back and all these other things. So maybe um what I'll get Leah to do is to get the link for that video and post it on your page so that you could have a look because it's good practical examples, re relevant examples, examples so subtle, but it will change your thinking. Um, so that is another thing too. As business people, you need to be and around people that can inspire you. You need to be inspired. Um, you need to be around people that could lift you up. Um, so that is important to seek knowledge to, and not only to seek knowledge, but also to apply knowledge. Which question? Um, this question? Yeah. Okay, so Rusty's asking, um, okay, I just lost the comment, sorry. Um, what are the main kingdom principles do you apply to your life? Well, I mean, our entire life is supposed to be kingdom. Um, this is not a Sunday morning thing or a during the week thing. Yeah. This is like an everyday Everything. thing, like when, you know, you're walking down any yeah. grocery yeah. or, you know, you're driving to work or um, you, you go to take a walk in, in the park. Well, you all may know the park in Trinidad. We say Savannah or the field. Like this is an everyday, every moment, every second <laughs> kind of life. And so being really kingdom nice. is like, being in kingdom, it is just like a lifestyle. Oh, so he clarified and he said, I mean like your finances. So oh, no. okay. So what principles we apply um, for finances. So, okay, so one of the things that I do, um, so we have like three different businesses. So for one of the businesses which is an investment company um one of the things that i do 
is even before we collect payments, I allocate where our tides are gonna go. Um, where we want to invest our, how do I say it, our kingdom investment, because we don't see it as tithes. Or in Trinidad, the culture here is, you know, oh, they're giving money to the church. Mm -hmm. We live beyond that. We have learned to outgrow these Christian thoughts and thinking. Um, so just putting his kingdom first will make sure that you are taken care of um obviously if you're collecting a paycheck and some of that figure goes obviously has to go back into the economy of heaven you might think oh i don't really have much left over but i do believe that actually making a kingdom investment is what we owe first because i believe first and foremost <clears throat> i'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven and secondly, I am a citizen of Earth. Oh, I'm a citizen of Trinidad. So we do pay taxes here. Um, but I do believe that I owe the kingdom of heaven first before I owe anything else. So we're just finding okay so somebody asked earlier um how do you pursue this is a interesting one how do you pursue your business if your spouse doesn't agree with the use of funds okay. i'll leave this for the married people so <laughs> <laughs> how do you pursue your business if your spouse doesn't agree with the use of funds. Um, hmm. You know, money is a real delicate, sensitive issue. Eh? Even in the church, eh? I could call it Jimmy, right? Yeah. Um, who does that? Really? No, somebody else asked that. Somebody asked. I don't okay. know. Um, All right. I can't find the comment. Um, Michelle. Yeah. What I want to say, Michelle, is this. There must be a level of unity, so to speak, even for your business to, 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 to flourish and blossom. Eh? Let, let us say, because I'm assuming this is a joint venture between both parties. Um, how the money is invested, how the money is spent. I mean, you know, even self if you guys having some sort of disagreement, I recommend a little prayer and fasting between you all, yeah, to come into that accord mm -hmm. and seeking that I spoke, I mentioned earlier about that academy of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, it is so important. You know, I don't have a problem. It look, Anya is completing her master's. Um, Leah is, you know, starting a PhD. I have no problem with that. I never had the opportunity, but I thank God for where I am, right? But what I'm saying to you is that when it comes to this, the practicality of it is very, very, very important. You know, so um, once there is, um, you know, that there is not a free flowing of that unity and I, you know, I was talking about being specific you know all that applies you know what I want to say to her is that everybody's <coughs> correct in their own way with the ideas you know once you're seeking that Holy Spirit to guide you you know your revelation is right and it applies to your life yeah. so it is very 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 important even for the church you know you find that on the pulpit, a lot of times pastors, you know, they, they don't want to talk finances because I don't know about you guys, but in Trinidad, with pastors feel they talk about money, you know, the first thing is that the, the pews, the pews say, you know, that the people in the pews is that the pastor won't be money. The, and, you know, this is a lie from the pits of hell. You see, and this is what keeps us weak. This is what keeps us poor when we fall <coughs> victim to these things. And you know, 
And the thing about it, you know, for people who are listening to us, and let me tell you guys something. Eh? <laughs> Just to share with you, we did never came into no inheritance from fathers, from forefathers, and whatever. We started from nothing, you know. And God, you know, one of the scriptures, you know, one of the, 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 the my, um, that I will reflect on, God say with little, as believers of the kingdom, you can do much. And it is very, very, very important, you know, that, you know, husband and wives and, and, and children, you know, kids, you know, the offsprings that you work together. Because that is how, you know, your legacy lives on, you know, you, you know that things can really, you know, can really, you know, be directed in your life. And it's an everlasting blessing. You know, once you, you keep, <coughs> you use your finances to build the kingdom, you do what is required, you will always fall, you know, into correct, into correct, um, into the correct avenue with God. And, you know, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Open your business. What do you mean beyond Hi, Michelle, um, if you are still here, um, could you clarify um, your question? What do you mean beyond the Christian? Um, just so we may be able to provide an accurate answer. Yeah. Did we hit all the questions? I think so. <laughs> um, do you all want to share um, a financial testimony? Leila, go down. Let the answer. You hear what I've been doing. No, no, no. Will you say what you Yeah. All right, people. So they keep putting me in the spotlight. That's fine. You know, I just wanted my life, my wife, my wife here. <laughs> And that's good to say life, eh? I have to be careful of what I say, you know. Life, wife. <laughs> I got to be careful, you know, because then, you know, um, she was telling me to share um, the testimony of um, a development we did. So first of all, the name of this development in Trinidad here is Leanne Gardens. L-E-A-N-N -N Gardens. It's a five-acre block that we had acquired. And it's named after my lovely wife here. Her first name is Leela, so I took the, the, the L-E from Leela, and um, her second name is Anne. So I took that and I put Leanne <coughs> Garden. So the great thing about this development is that we, I had my eyes on this land for about seven, eight years prior to acquiring it. Eh? And I know in my heart, you see, pursuing what you really want is so important. Being consistent, you know, and I would go and meet the contact, which was one of the brothers. So to make a long story short with this is that um, when I took the paperwork for this land to my attorneys here in Trinidad, the head of that firm indicated to me, Mr. Maraj, 
I don't think that we would get involved with this transaction. So here, what am I saying to you? This attorney is telling me, I don't think we should get involved with this transaction because you're going to lose your money. I am leaving for Canada the next day and I want to put a deposit on this money because I know, I know God talked to me. I know the Holy Spirit. The three of them talked to me, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and I got to get, get it done. Because what's when I want? I was on pins and nails, so to speak. Anyhow, I got somebody in the office there at the firm after they granted me permission. The same set attorney said, listen, we would not get involved with it, but if you want to do it with one of our attorneys on your own, with your risk, risk you go right ahead. I did it and I paid the guy some money and all of that. And he went back to Venezuela because he, you know, is from Venezuela. The thing about it is that um, once God speaks to you, you've got to be obedient. This is my point. The point is that I was telling Anya and Anna a while ago that even your accountants, your attorneys, right, the people in position who you are <laughs> dealing with may say no. And, you know, within yourself, you feel... You know that, listen, these people are so experienced and they are, they are well, you know, rooted in what they are doing. You see, people, I want you to understand this. Eh? What I'm saying is that this is where you got to exercise your faith. This is where you trust, you know, your discernment and accessing. This is the academy I'm talking about of heaven. This is the academy of heaven I'm talking about. This is what really it is all about. It is very, very, very important that the world, the people in the institution, the bankers could tell you no. And God makes a way. God makes a way. And we started that development in 2015. That development has completed. And every time I say, well, that's the end. Anya, let's organize. Let's do some Because Anya and Anne is my business partners. When I tell them, I say, let's move. We see God doing something. And it's just going on. So this is going into four. We, in 2020, you know, May of 2020 will be five years. Right? And, you know, it, it's a lot of, um, it's a real deep testimony to me, eh? To me, it's a deep testimony because um, I think, you know, as believers of the kingdom and as we, you know, this is a way of, uh, of looking at the economics of it all. Because I said earlier on, with little you can do much. And we really didn't have anything much to start that on, you know. So we see things <coughs> escalating away and God send the right people. Things happen and we start doing it from stage to stage and one stage paid for the other. I hope um, you guys are understanding me, you know, that one stage of the development paid for the other and we took it to different levels and we even built a house on one of the lots and, and sold it as well. But, you know, the foundation in all of this is that when the finances start hitting the account, you know, that even your business partners and, you know, the people involved, you share the ultimate vision together to make sure and give into the kingdom what is due, you know, and even surpass that, you know, even that 10% in tithes that we talk about, like Anya was saying, you know, sometimes, you know, man, this is not to glorify us in any way or, you know, whatever God has blessed us with. We just do whatever he says. At least I try to be as obedient as I possibly can. You know? So we have just 15 minutes left. Um, so if anybody has any other questions, I invite you to post them so that we can get to them. Um, Press them for my son. So. <laughs> I saw that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Um, Question to from Leah Ramnath. Um, I would say yes. Yeah, 
Yeah, I would say yes. We had some hardship last year. Really hard. Really, really hard. But um, with much prayer, supplication, sowing seeds, um, giving into the kingdom, we have seen where God had turned around things, even in our marriage life, in our home, in our yes. businesses. And the thing is, when you sow seeds, you sow seeds, these things like your hardship, um, from high pressure, from any sort of sickness, um, you gain wealth. Yes, you gain wealth from giving. Um, all you have to do is give joy. Always be joyful when you're giving. Um, make sure you pay your tithes, your offering, and uh, you will see your life grow. You will see kingdom in your family um and you all, you all know that kingdom is royalty and as i would always say there's royalty in my dna <laughs> so um aside from all the hardship and everything we have seen where our life had grown to depend <coughs> on god much now than before and we're looking for a great future Come 2020, we are looking forward to greater and bigger things. So, yes. Um, Stefano, I, I see you asking if um, our businesses are focused on the local community. Yes. Um, yes, it is. All local um i believe that you cannot export something that you do not have locally so i do believe that if we have anybody here who is interested in business i say start local i think that is something good um oh that's a good question from apostle diane what is um she's saying so the attitude of a giver is more important than the gift the giver brings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let this one stage be put up. That's it, no? Okay. She has two questions. Okay. So the attitude of... I'm not too sure if it's a question or a comment. No, it's a comment. It's a comment. Yeah, okay. Um, Thank you. Um, so Leah is asking, that. should everyone get an MBA? Um... <laughs> I say once you have the means and the desire, yes. you should do it. Um, no matter your age, um, no matter what you you think that you you know you're not smart enough or you're not ready enough. Um, I do believe also that a lot of information is available online, but for society for society's sake, we must have the certificate because that is what people respect. Um, because I believe I was speaking to Leah about that same thing recently, you know, um, about, you know, is that MBA really worth it or not? Because, you know, you use the internet to write your assignments, to do your research and everything is available. But um, as well, it does develop skills in you that you can't develop from reading off the internet. So I think, I think, yes. So we have just 10 minutes um just 10 minutes left and just to touch on 2020 i was speaking to somebody this week and i was telling them i believe that 2020 is going to be a big year mm -hmm. um but i do believe that we should also pos position ourselves to make it even more grand um not just because it's just 2020 and 2020 is a new decade and it has a new ring to it but i do believe that it is a very big year um whatever that means I, I'm vision, not sure, but I just vision. think that it's going to be a really, really great year. Yeah. Why a kingdom business is important. Why a kingdom business is important for the rest of society. Um, because we should lead the way. And they should come to us and they should come and ask us and see what is working for us and implement what we have working for us in their businesses. That is what we are really here to do. We are here to set the trend. We are here to take over. 
we are here to be the influence and we must influence every sphere so one of the sphere is the area of business um so what i have been doing is is doing is trying to do different investments um and basically putting my money to work for me and that is a very important statement because we are I mean, yes, we work for money, but we need to be smart and let the money work for us. And um, because God is also calling us, he also did call us, sorry, to be good stewards. And being a good steward means being a good, uh, is being a good manager. Yeah. I know you tried lots of businesses before this present one. What, what advice would you give to those whose business is not, is not prospering? Well, first of all, is it really not prospering or are you really not managing well? Um, because there were times that I did feel like, okay, maybe business is not for me. Maybe I need to get rid of this place. Maybe I need to, you know, find something else to do. But again, your mindset and your perspective is important. Um, I am not saying that you you have to close things and move on to another chapter. That is a different, that is a whole different conversation. But if your business is not prospering for you and you believe that this is what I should be doing, this is what I should be owing, um, owning, um, this is really my future, I encourage you to obviously seek the direction of the Holy Spirit. Um, I encourage you as well to open doors for yourself so that God could open doors for you. And what I mean by that is, for example, um, sorry, I don't know what I did there. Um, for example, when you create a need, God is going to fill that need. Um, when you create that demand, for him, allow him to supply that demand. And that is important because that's how markets work, supply and demand. Um, so, for example, like in my businesses, if I increase my staff's salary, um, you know, I just see sales start to increase because obviously, you know, this is extra money that I need to be paying out. So, you know, where is this money going to come from? Um, so that is just an example. I'm not too sure if you all understand that or not. Um, I saw Pastor Peppy come in about the PhD in Florida. Yes, Lord. <laughs> um, so if your business is not prospering, Kind of check and see what you're doing. If you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing, if you're doing something that, if you're not doing something and you should be doing. Um, as well, I would encourage you to sow a seed specifically for business. your business to prosper. Um, make a sacrifice and show God, you know, this is what I really, this is what I want. So just some closing remarks. So the things we touched on tonight was one, be specific with your sowing with your first fruits, um, when you give to the kingdom, be specific what you are asking for. Number two, you are never ever going to be without anything in life to start a business. Use what you have, watch God multiply and be faithful and just develop things and ripple things in front of your eyes beyond your wildest dreams. Um, three, what's three? Give a three. Something that you touch on. The testimonies, um, financial. Did you touch on, well, yeah, using what you have, but little you can do much. You know, start <laughs> with what you have. Yeah. You know, start with what you have. You don't have to acquire abundance to start what you need to do. With God, you can start with whatever you had. You have, and he's just unable to do it. And no, number four, wise, yeah. take care of your... Take yeah. care of your staff. <laughs> they will take care of your customers and they will make your life a lot easier if you take care of your staff. And that doesn't mean only monetary. Um, so we have five minutes. So I just want to remind you all, go on the website, pepiramnatintl.com. Subscribe to the newsletters, like, share, comment on our pages on Facebook and Instagram. Any questions, um, we don't have to be going live for you to ask questions. Send your questions, send your comments. Um, what is it you all want us to talk about for the next live? Any topic, 
I mean, I know that on our panel, we have a lot of amazing environmentalists. We have people yeah. who work in healthcare. We have people who work in business. Um, so anything at all, we are here. We are open. We are here to serve you. Um, so thank you all very much for tuning in. We hope that it was beneficial. This is the first time that we have done anything like this. So, yes. you know, hopefully the next time will be a lot better and you enjoy it even more. Um, so thank you all. Hi, Daniel. I just want to see everybody that's on. Hi, Rusty, Denny, Apostle, Diane, Michelle. Thank you. I see Reshma. Thank you. I see Stefano. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Kevron. Thank you. I saw Nicholas was on earlier and Kim. So thank you all very much. And we hope you enjoy. Bye. Okay, have a good thank night. You all. Bye. Daniel Stell.